Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the reading of our Sunday morning devotionals for October 30th, 2022. As always, we're going to start off with David Jeremiah's book, Holy Moments in the Presence of God. And our morning lesson is entitled, Getting to Yes the Hard Way. The scripture is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 6. Whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Until we are faced with the consequences of what we do wrong, we won't even admit it to ourselves. We are the most marvelous people at rationalizing wrongdoing. In our culture, absolutes are almost gone. We face a major problem in the church today with people doing what is absolutely wrong and thinking they have a good case for why it is not so bad. Until we face the penalty for our wrongdoing, we often won't be honest with ourselves. I think Jonah probably thought he had a good case for not being the right man for the Assyrian job until the gastric juices started working on him in the belly of the fish. Then he started to say, well, <clears throat> maybe I am the right man for the job after all. Some people think that this type of foxhole decision isn't genuine. But just because we say yes to God under pressure doesn't mean we aren't being honest. It means we had to get to yes the hard way, but we got there all the same. Oh, the story of Jonah. And our evening lesson is entitled, Endless Possibilities. The scripture is from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 27. With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Dr. Billy Graham is reported to have had a conversation with the former chancellor of West Germany, Conrad Adenauer. The Chancellor asked Dr. Graham, Do you believe Christ rose from the dead? Yes, I do, replied the evangelist. Do you believe he is in heaven now? Yes, I do. Do you believe he will return and reign over the earth? Yes, I do. So do I, the Chancellor concluded. If he doesn't, there is no hope for this world. The famous German leader had come to the same conclusion that millions throughout history have. The only one who can save the earth is God himself. The world's problems continue to be addressed by many trying to help those who hurt. Others have resigned themselves to man's ultimate self-destruction and have insulated themselves from suffering with barriers of materialism and pleasure. Both are right about one thing. Man has created a world incapable of saving itself. And that is exactly the kind of world God is able to save. One in which man's possibilities are totally limited, but God's are unlimited. God can best demonstrate himself when man has reached the limits of himself. And now Sarah Young's book, Jesus Calling. I am with you, I am with you, I am with you. 
Heaven's bells continually peal with that promise of my presence. Some people never hear those bells because their minds are earthbound and their hearts are closed to me. Others hear the bells only once or twice in their lifetimes, in rare moments of seeking me above all else. My desire is that my sheep hear my voice continually, for I am the ever-present shepherd. Quietness is the classroom where you learn to hear my voice. Beginners need a quiet place in order to still their minds. As you advance in this discipline, you gradually learn to carry the stillness with you wherever you go. When you step back into the mainstream of life, strain to hear those glorious bells. I am with you, I am with you, I am with you. That was taken from the books of Jeremiah and John. And now David Jeremiah's book, Strength for Today. The lesson is entitled, Special Access. The scripture is from the book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access. The Secret Service was trying to determine how a woman gained access to the president's private club in Florida. She had two passports, four mobile devices, a laptop, and a thumb drive allegedly containing malware. Since then, security has been tightened and access is more stringent. We live in a world of limited access, heightened security, perplexing passwords, and dangerous hacking. Everyone is interested in access. The Bible uses the word access three times to describe our freedom in approaching God. Romans 5 verse 2 says, we have access by faith through Christ to the Father. Ephesians 2 verse 18 adds, For through him we both, Jews and Gentiles, have access by one Spirit to the Father. And Ephesians 3 verse 12 concludes, We have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. God is not only an endless refuge for us in times of need. He is always accessible. God uses facial recognition software. When you approach him, he sees the countenance of his son. He uses a simple password, Jesus. And one thing is for sure, heaven will never be hacked. And now Sarah Young's book, book Jesus Always. Today our lesson is accompanied with three scriptures the first of which is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 3. The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Also from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. 
Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you. And finally, from the book of Psalm, chapter 73, verse 24. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will take me into glory. And now the reading. Walk with me in close, trusting love bonds of joyful dependence. The companionship I offer you sparkles with precious promises from the Bible. I love you with perfect, everlasting love. I am always with you every nanosecond of your life. I know everything about you, and I have already paid the penalty for all your sins. Your inheritance, kept in heaven for you, can never perish, spoil, or fade. I guide you through your life, and afterward I will take you into glory. Dependence is an inescapable trait of the human condition. Many people despise their neediness and work hard to create the illusion of self-sufficiency in their lives. However, I designed you to need me constantly and to be joyful about your reliance on me. Recognizing and accepting your dependence increases your awareness of my loving presence. This draws you closer to me and helps you enjoy my company. I invite you to commune with me your devoted companion in more and more of your moments. Walk joyfully with me along the pathway of your life. <clears throat> Excuse me. And finally, from our book by Sarah Young, Jesus Listens, As you may know, our devotional is in the form of a prayer, the contents of which today are taken from the books of Psalm, Proverbs, and Proverbs. So let us pray. O oh, compassionate Jesus, you are the one who keeps me safe. My natural tendency is to rely heavily on my own thinking and planning as if that is where my security lies. When I start to feel anxious about something, my mind goes into overdrive, searching for solutions, seeking to feel secure. All the while you are with me, holding me by my right hand. Help me to remember and rely on your continual presence with me. Instead of trusting in myself, which is foolish, I want to walk in wisdom and depend on you to keep me safe. You're teaching me that biblical wisdom involves trusting in you more than in myself or other people. You are always ready to guide me with your counsel so I can bring all my concerns to you. Sometimes writing out my prayers clarifies my thinking, especially when I'm feeling confused. Please show me the way forward as I wait in your presence, asking you to guide my mind while I focus on you and your word. 
whispering, Jesus is one way I stay focused on you. Your name is a strong tower. When I run into it, I am safe. In your strong name, amen. Lila and I are so thankful you could join us for the reading of our Sunday devotionals. As always, it's a special day. Today will be wonderful, as will this next week. We're just about making it to November. So the next time I see you will be in November. Have a wonderful day and a great week. And as always, may God bless you and keep you. Take care. Amen.